why like we must have a set funeral? Why cannot be a party? Actually, you can. In the past, people usually use funeral as a form of uh, helping the family to deal with their grief. Hi, I'm Natalie Fiong. I'm a Life Managing Director. Today, I'm going to share my occupation with a child, a Gen Z and a senior. Let's see how it goes. Hello. Hi. I'm Isabel. I'm 13 years old. Hi Isabel. I'm Natalie. I'm a Life Managing Director. What is your job about? Okay, my job as a Life Managing Director is to help people to pre-plan for their afterlife. But why you need to plan for their afterlife? They don't just like, pass on, right? Actually, for afterlife, right, there's a lot of things that people leave behind. Like assets, like money, property, cars. There's a lot of memories and belongings left behind as well. And people tend to forget about all these things. Do you have to be good in like any subjects to be a life managing director? In fact, you don't need to have uh, qualifications in terms of like uh, A in math or English and all that. The more important thing is to actually have a lot of empathy because in this line of work, right, we actually meet with a lot of people who are grieving. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very sensitive about their feelings. Why like we must have a set funeral? Why cannot be a party? Actually you can. In the past, people usually use funeral as a form of uh, helping the family to deal with their grief. So one of our deceased customers, he is actually a soccer fan. His last wish was actually to have like a soccer kind of gathering. It make it less um, set for the people. It's not a must to have certain kind of format. So you can always plan and tell your family how you want it to be. What's your favourite part when helping people plan their afterlife? I think my favourite part about being a life managing director is that satisfaction when the family members come and thank me. Before death, they already plan ready. And then after death, they just have to give me a call and then I will help them to organise and settle everything. It gives me a lot of satisfaction that I help them through uh, this grieving process, reducing their burden, basically. Hi, my Hello. name is Erica. I'm 23 years old this year. Hello, I'm Natalie. I'm a Life Managing Director. So Natalie, what is your job? Actually, my job actually comprises of a lot of things. So it starts from when we are alive. We start planning from now all the way till we pass on. Yeah. So a lot of people are familiar with things like will writing but they are not so familiar with like lasting power attorney, mm. LPA and also afterlife planning. When we are alive, that's when we can make decisions. Correct. Because a lot of times when people pass on, they don't leave behind instructions. The family doesn't know what to do. Would you say that that's also what sort of inspired you to take up this position? It's because of my own experience. Mm. In 2000. 14, yeah. my dad passed away. Mm. So my dad was a bit superstitious kind of yeah. person. So he didn't buy any insurance and whatsoever. Yeah. Like my dad used to be a Christian okay. during his younger days. And then later on, he was a free thinker. Uh. And later on, when he was sick, my mom actually asked him to do a bit of chanting. So he was like Buddhist. We were like scratching our head. Okay, um, so which religion should we do for him for the funeral? From the experience, right? Um, it really kind of wake me up that it is important that everyone speak up their last wishes to their family. I relate with what you're saying because I also went through a similar situation. I just wish that it's really less of a taboo and like a lot of people talk a bit more about it. I think yes. that would be very helpful. Yeah, I agree. Um, what if um, someone who passes on just has a very different want mm. for their funeral as compared to a family member who wants to have it in a different way? Usually, we will respect what the deceased wants. Okay. We do have cases whereby there's a lot of confusion in the family, sometimes even quarrels, arguments. However, end of the day, what the family decides, right? we will just do it for them. But if let's say the deceased already pre-planned, let's say they bought a package, yep. and the package already states that it's a Buddhist, we will let them, let the family know. What are some misconceptions of, let's say, like a, a life managing director? When I first started, I actually shared with all my friends yep. that, hey, you know what, now I'm in this trade. Of course, some of them will be like shocked. Yeah. And then they say, hey, why, why do you want to join this trade? And then there are some misconceptions whereby they say, ah, you become embalmer. Oh. That's it, uh, no. <laughs> it's a totally different job. I think on that note, I'm quite curious. 
So in the future, if I were to pass on, what would I need to sort of have prepared in a sense? Okay, so everyone needs a will, that's yes. for sure. Even before death, right, I would say uh, LPA is very important too. So a will kicks in only when we kick the bucket. So a LPA happens when we lose our mental capacity. So we need to let our family know how I want my family to take care of me. For example, every morning I want to uh, use a certain brand of facial foam. You can actually note down very specific and very clear instructions so that your family knows how to take care of you. What do you find most rewarding of what, like, what you do? I would say helping the family in terms of their emotional burdens. I do notice some of them are still grieving after long periods of time. So I try to send in like, words of encouragement and yeah. for Serious cases, right? I may try to put it subtly that hey, you know you may want to see a professional. End of the day, right? I'm glad that I'm there for them. Mm. Yeah, and then they felt my sincerity of helping them. So that is what's most satisfying in terms of my job. Hi. Hello. My name is Mike. I'm 68 years old. I'm Natalie. I'm a life managing director. What makes you choose this career? My friend actually introduced me to this job around COVID. Period. During COVID, a lot of people actually passed on and I realised that the people around me, right, they didn't have planning. A lot of people have no will. I find that it's important there is someone there to, to advise them, to tell them what has to be done and then help them to bear a bit of a burden in terms of funeral planning. How do you explain uh, the different tablets, tombstone mm. and the uh, flux? Actually, back in olden China days, uh, when people pass away, uh, they dig a hole in the ground and then they bury the person, right? So they will actually put a wooden plug over there. Usually the oldest male in the family, they will stay at the tomb for like three years. Then after that, when three years is over, they bring the plug back or they craft a new wooden plug and then they bring it back home. That's where they pay respect to their ancestor and loved ones. Many people think uh, that is very pantang. How do you think? Normally, we crack a joke lah, actually. There is this saying lah, pantang jak kantang. Have you heard of it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we normally try to crack jokes. We try to um, make the atmosphere less intimidating to them so that people will start to let their gut down and then they don't think so much about the superstitious. The pantang or superstitious doesn't help us at all. Sometimes I even share my own story to others so that they, they will know that, hey, you know what, actually, if I don't plan for myself, maybe my children will suffer next time. What is the common question the family have when planning a funeral? Most of the time, right, they are concerned about money. They don't know that after a funeral, they need to pay everything in cash. For a funeral, right, it actually can cost a few thousand to tens of thousands of dollars, even hundred thousand dollars. We do have people who actually just Google you know, because they don't know who to look for, so they Google and then they find like the cheapest funeral in Singapore. But a lot of times, they don't realise there are actually a lot of hidden costs. Now I know it's a table bao Yeah, a lot of times they yeah. will say package bao yeah. leo, but you need to really ask them to break it down for you. What is the one line lesson you learn? Being grateful for what we have and be present with our family. What we have lost, we, we cannot chase ready my life. I lost my dad. There's nothing else I can do except for like, you know, visiting him at the niche. But what I can do is to spend more time with my mom, for example. I will say that it's important to really spend quality time with the family. Thank you for answering my question. Huh? You're you most much. welcome. Actually, I feel that after talking to them, right, there's actually still a lot of people who don't understand what is a life managing director's job all about? People are always very shocked about all these things that we do because they never thought about it before. So this is why uh, it's important that everyone start thinking about pre-planning and then maybe along the way, you might realise that there's a lot of things that you wanted to have and you can maybe jot it down first before you have it planned out. I hope you have learned more about my job as a life managing director. Bye-bye. When they say, oh, pao uh, they always say, all oh, included. But end of the day, when different vendors start to collect money, they get a shock. Yeah, so this is the most common uh, things that happen uh, during the uh, organization of a funeral.